Imam Mustafa, you have no idea how much I wanted to meet you. I'm honored. In the civil libertarian community, you, sir, are a hero. And I'm thrilled that you liked my op-ed. Liked it. My whole community loved it. We were all very moved. <laughs> who, would have, who would have thought that the son of Charles Bacon would be making the case for our mosque in the, in the pages of the Naperville Gazette? And Carl, do you realize you have written the definitive argument for Muslim American civil rights? You're not even Muslim. I had to do something. I can't sit silent while my father runs roughshod over the First Amendment. Besides, the Muslim community is being targeted here. It's being singled out. The, the discrimination is blatant. We've tried to reach out to your father a number of times, but he, he refuses to meet with us. Yeah, look, I, I know my father has caused a lot of pain in your community here, and I, I'm sorry, I feel terrible. Oh, God, I mean, it's, God. It's, it's, it's never easy being a son. Mm -hmm. I, too, am a son. Yeah. I cannot even imagine I mean, for the son of a public figure to take such a strong stand against his own father. I mean, a principled stand, that's... It takes a lot of courage. Thank you. That's very kind. But my dad and I, we disagree about all sorts of things. I, I wish it wasn't the case, him being so anti-everything. But it, he can't even deal with me being gay. <laughs> oh. He, he can't even pretend not to be homophobic. Hey, Mom, Mustafa, you do know I'm gay, right? I had heard. That's not a problem for you, is it? No, no, of, of course not. I just guess I assumed you being a progressive Muslim that you were pro-gay rights. Well, there's many ways to be uh, progressive and Muslim. The, uh, Islam is a progressive religion. And I, I know there's a big debate in Islam about homosexuality. No, uh, debate? No, there's no... Oh, I, I, of course, Muslim fundamentalists are anti-gay, just like the Christian fundamentalist and the Jewish fundamentalist and the Mormon. If, 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 if by homosexuality you are referring to the, um, to the act of sodomy between two men... I, I sure hope so. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, The act of sodomy um, must be witnessed by four uh, adult men before any punishment can be prescribed. So, you know, and how likely is that to happen? <laughs> that, is the, um, that is the brilliance of our Quran, you know, that there, an objection is raised, but then the uh, burden of proof also get raised. Yeah, so either that or Islam has a peculiar penchant for voyeurism. <laughs> you know, four witnesses and all. <laughs> Sorry. Look, <clears throat> when Christians tell me that Christianity condemns homosexuality, I say, well then, Christianity is wrong about homosexuality. Christianity may be right about all sorts of things, but it is... Christianity doesn't condemn homosexuality. Those people are just idiots. Islam is, is very clear. Allah knows that we make mistakes. You know, we are uh, human. We were fallible. We, we succumb to temptations. You know, I mean, Allah did give man free will. Four witnesses. Maybe that's Allah's way of telling us to be discreet. Uh, Allah speaks an allegory. I love it. Uh, marry four wives if you can treat them all equally. And since you can't treat them all equally, you can only marry one. Kind of. Uh, Look, I, I know my community, and um, in my community, if you, if you talk about sex, uh, any kind of sex, let alone gay sex, um, you, uh, you will lose people. You know, you will offend people. So maybe there is something to, um, to guarding one's privacy. You know, maybe Allah understands. With all due respect, sir, don't ask, don't tell, doesn't work. It's asking gay people to lie, to, to hide, to live in shame. Look, I get that you're evolving and all, and then I'm happy to meet you where you're at. Meet me where I'm at. All human beings are entitled to privacy. 
not everything needs to be public knowledge. But you're not talking about privacy, you're talking about closets. Closets. Look, obviously you understand your tradition a million times better than I do, but my Muslim friends, especially my gay Muslim friends, and, and there are gay Muslims, you know, they tell me that Muslim homophobia is entirely cultural, and that sodomy between guys is way more common in the Islamic world than it is here. Oh, that is, that is nonsense. The, in, the, in the Islamic world, your friends are exaggerating. Yes, yes, there is a cultural dimension, but there is also a religious dimension. And yes, there are there are men and boys back home, but a tiny minority, and maybe even some women perhaps, who, who do these things. We know this. I knew of some guys in my engineering school about, no matter whom it was, rumored, but, but, my, but it didn't preclude them from, from getting married, from uh, having children, from, from leading normal lives. You know, and, and if, a man, if a man wants to carry on with a ma another man on the side dis discreetly, then um, we don't condone it. We think it's wrong, but we know it happens. I mean, he is still a husband to his wife. He's still a father to his children. He's still a man. So what, am I not a man? No, of course you're a man. But American culture is different. There are things people will accept here that the West, the West has created categories that don't work in the Muslim world. In Pakistan, for example, uh, homosexuality is, is seen as something one does, not something one is. You know, one, one engages in homosexual behavior. One is not a homosexual. I mean, that, that's how we believe. Yeah. As my friend Samir loves to say, lots of homosexuality in Saudi Arabia, but ain't no homosexuals. Meanwhile, the whole country is downloading gay porn. Carl, if you want to have a serious conversation about that, then show me some respect, okay? I, I have nothing but respect for you, Imam Mustafa. I'm your ally no matter what. I'm just a little miffed that... Look, I too am fighting for my rights in this country, okay? I too am discriminated against. And, and no one should be discriminated against in America. All discrimination is wrong, of course, but, but you cannot compare the two. Maybe I need to learn more about it. Look, here, they, they, here they tell us that people are born gay, right? Uh, that um, being gay is not something one chooses, that it's uh, like being left-handed or having brown eyes, right? Yes, people are born gay, and we're as flawed and as imperfect as everyone else, uh, albeit infinitely more fabulous, but... and and deserving of the same dignity, the same rights. We, we, all, we all deserve dignity, but Allah makes no mistakes. Now Allah is Al-Majid, Allah is he's compassionate, He's glorious, He's generous and kind. Allah is perfect. We are not. And we believe that the Holy Quran is the word of Allah. So, so if the Quran forbids certain activities, then... You, you know, th there was this this billboard in North Carolina that read, abortion is murder, homosexuality is a sin, Islam is a lie. It was put up by some whack job Christian church. For me, this billboard crystallized precisely what the American right wing thinks of us. Women, queers, Muslims. And we need to fight such people. I mean, we have to fight their hatred, we have to fight their ignorance. And, and we should do it together. Queers and Muslims walk on common ground in this country. Those who despise queers also despise Muslims. And effective politics are coalition politics. Sure, we may disagree every now and then, and, and yes, there are Muslims who hate queers and queers who hate Muslims, but it, instead of attacking each other, we should be learning from each other. Absolutely. The Muslim Americans can learn a lot from the struggles others have fought in this country, of course. And I, I recently learned that Europeans from Italy, from Ireland, from Poland, you know, they were mistreated in this country for generations. And they're Christian. And yes, I am very impressed with how gay people have been able to create change in this country. I, mean, I have studied your movements. I mean, your community went from being one of the most despised communities in the country to today being championed by the president. I mean, that's brilliant. 
Queer kids get bullied in school, Muslim kids get bullied in school. Queers suffer violent hate crimes, Muslims suffer violent uh, Carl, hate crimes. Carl, I reached out to you because you wrote a most eloquent and powerful and, and compassionate piece. I mean, I, I thought we were meeting... I mean, you said in your email that you wanted to brainstorm changing public opinion about the building of mosques. I, I do. But I am, I am an imam. Okay, I, I provide spiritual guidance to the members of my community. I help people make sense of their faith. I want every Muslim to have a meaningful relationship with God. And yes, the Muslim community and the gay community, yes, we have some enemies in common, but we are also very, very different. Look, I respect your right to make whatever choices you want. Cho choices? Is that what you... <laughs> You know, you, you speak as if there's this impenetrable wall separating queers and Muslims. But a lot of people happen to land on both sides of that wall. Muslims are queer and queers are Muslim. I don't know what that means. What, what I can tell you is that Muslims are a very family-oriented people. Okay, we are very conservative. We are very, very traditional, especially when it comes to our family and our children. I'm not saying it's always good. Let it's always ask, the best. Let me something. If a young member of your congregation were to come to you and tell you that he's gay, what would you say to him? In America, there's this, there's this idea that straight relationships and gay relationships are the same, that they're equal. That's because they are equal, but that wasn't my question. If a young member of your congregation were to come to you and tell you he's gay, what yeah, would, look, would the, you say? Yeah, look, the masjid, the mosque, it, it belongs to the community. Okay, it's where we gather to commune with Allah. And if you're gay, are you also welcome to commune with Allah? That's between the individual and his creator. So, th this gay kid finally works up the courage to out himself to you. Uh, no words of encouragement, no understanding, no assuring him that he's a valued and cherished member of the community? As an, as an imam, I... I do not encourage anyone, never mind a Muslim, to be gay. No, I, no but, if, but if a member of, of my mosque came to me and said that he is gay, I, I, I would not condemn him. I would not banish him. I would, in fact, defend his right to pray at the mosque even if the community objected. But, but I would be obliged to instruct him as to what the Holy Quran teaches us. Now, he can decide for himself which path he wants to take. But on our day of judgment, we face Allah by ourselves. Okay, we own up to our sins and our transgressions. Hey, look, it is not my place to render the verdict on homosexuality. I'm merely a teacher. I'm not the, I'm not the authority. No, all authority belongs to Allah. Sins and transgressions. Eh? Excuse me, but you are way too handsome to be preaching such ugly ideas. I mean, you rail against Islamophobia, and then you hide behind Islam as you dish out this doctrine of homophobia. Doctrine of homophobia. <laughs> Islam provides for us a clear moral path. I wish you and every gay person in this country the absolute best. Allah loves you no less than anybody else, but... If you are asking me as an imam to, 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 to bless your, your sex life, and that is not something... <laughs> I'm not seeking Islam's approval any more than I'm seeking the Pillsbury Doughboy's approval. I'm pointing out to you the contradictions, the deep flaws in your line of reasoning. If you are my ally, if you are my ally, you are my ally out of conviction. But if, if the price uh, of your support is the betrayal of my own beliefs, then no, I am sorry. A conviction only has value if it's applied consistently. Well, my convictions are consistent with my faith. I mean, you defend the freedom of religion, no? Where's your First Amendment right now? <laughs> you know, you are a lot like your father. What? Whoa, do not go there. You know, you're not in Pakistan anymore, Imam Mustafa. You're not in the Arab world. You're not in Iran. So how about dialing down all that crap about what the Quran does and does not forbid? We're fighting for our lives here, all of us. And you're gonna pass judgment on me?